Want me to pull over for a while? You could use five minutes rest. No, we gotta get this stuff through. Can't fight a war without it. Snipers back of our line. How do you figure it? Oh, the brass hatch probably forgot to cover some spot up front. Yeah, just like we're probably on the wrong road. Wait and see. They're probably reading the map upside down. That's right, snafu. Boy, could I do with a hamburger. Haven't you heard? Hamburgers aren't in season. No breakfast, no dinner. Am I hurting? Okay, by the numbers. It isn't the food, it's the bullets. We never get enough of nothing, and nothing ever gets here on time. Why do them big guys care if we starve? Yeah, there ought to be an investigation. Sure. Everything is snafu. Stop snapping your gums, soldiers. They're not playing games with us back there. If the child's late, there's a reason. You're damn right there's a reason, Corporal. Let's take a look at it. War was born under an evil star, and it's filled with accident, misfortune, the unforeseen, and the unexpected. Get used to something. In war, the abnormal is normal, and uncertainties the one thing that's certain. War doesn't run on schedule. Remember that when the food isn't there on time. You can't predict the twists and turns of battle. They'll affect you in many ways. They'll affect your food, your weapons, your equipment, your rest, your life. You spend three days marching up a road and the next three marching back. Damn foolishness. Stupidity among the higher-ups. Hurry, hurry, hurry to wait, wait, wait. Well, the enemy isn't over polite. He isn't always where he's supposed to be. Sometimes he hands you a surprise. The long march up wasn't foolishness and the long hike back wasn't stupid. Our intelligence showed an armored division had punched a hole in our position and would cut our lifeline of supply unless it was blocked. Would you rather walk or would you rather die? Where the hell's our tanks? Where's our planes? War isn't run on a timetable. Sometimes there are not going to be any tanks. Sometimes there are not going to be any planes. But somewhere the tanks are fighting. They're not taking a holiday. And the planes are flying. They're not in dead storage. That's a swell rifle you're firing. But sometime it may jam. Nothing's perfect in this world. You'll expect a bridge to be ready for your advance across a stream. And it will be ready. Because one of the best damn engineer battalions in any man's army is building. You better mind my brother, I walk on across. And when you get there, no bridge, no sign of one. You've got to get across the best way you can, and you're mad. Somebody's crossed you up again. As usual, the situation's normal, uh, and nothing's the way it should be. Well, the bridge was ready, but so was an enemy dive bomber. Go on and gripe. Sitting in a hunk of ground six by eight feet. 
And Grandpa guys running a war six by 8,000 miles. You know what we are? Worms. Worms is right. Check. Yeah, and all we've got is a worm's eye view of the big show. Listen, you know Sergeant Jones of K Company? You know, the old gray-headed guy. So? Well, he was telling me about an outfit in the last war. They'd been held in reserve and were itching for a fight. Finally, they got the orders to move to the front. That was out this way. After they'd been marching about six hours, they turned around and marched them back. Then they moved them over here to the west. Then they switched them back and moved them over here to the east. Well, by this time, those guys were dizzy. Their dogs were practically worn off to their ankles. But did they get any rest? No. All of a sudden, they started forward again. Be ready to attack to the north at dawn. Well, it came morning, and the outfit moved south and attacked in that direction. Yet, as far as they knew, the enemy was up here to the north. Well, that was the original snafu. They walked those guys' legs off, going around in circles. But all the time this outfit was moving, the battle was shifting. And the big boys kept sending them wherever it looked like the next breakthrough was coming. Sure, those guys were mad as hell. But what they didn't know was, the front was changing with them all the time. There was one enemy breakthrough after another, never spot where they'd been. And a big enemy circling movement that had to be stopped by going right back to the same place where they'd started from. Which gets me back to the worm's eye point of view. From where we sat watching out for a small patrol, maybe. You can't savvy the angles of guys watching out for a couple of divisions or a whole army. I still say that right back of us a bunch of duds who don't even know what time it is. Why don't you sit down and write yourself a threatening letter? I tell you, there's just too many things you can't figure. And you're right again, Corporal. War is full of blind spots, events you couldn't count on, surprises you couldn't expect. Here's a stream winding through the countryside peaceful and quiet. Here it is on a map. Narrow, easily crossed, no obstacle to troops. Even so, the top side checked it to make sure they don't take chances. But a couple of hundred miles away, this happened. The maps don't show cloudbursts. So you get to your little stream and find another snafu. An aerial photograph is usually more reliable than a map. Here's one. And here's a heavily wooded area. It's been checked by personal reconnaissance. So you ride all night and you're ready to dive in and you find this. Incendiary bombs have done a nice job on your aerial photograph and your forest doesn't live here anymore. War plays its hand for high stakes, and sometimes it even pays off the winner in disappointment. You fought hard and victoriously, and you occupy a village. The inhabitants have fled, and the town is yours. A village, open for your comfort, a night of repose. Food, baths, bed. Beds for weary legs and aching bodies. Thank God for the man who invented beds. Until further orders, troops will bivouac in yards of houses. No dwelling house or building will be entered under any condition until further notice. You're mad. Burned up. Bitter. Are there any questions? Fall out. What do they care if you get a good night's rest? Sleep on the ground again. When right here along this street, are dozens of houses with dozens of bedrooms? It's unfair. Yeah, senseless. Yeah, sure, it's cockeyed. A beautiful bed, an elegant bed, going to waste. And maybe when things are that cockeyed, you've got a right to disobey an order. Booby trap. It was a beautiful bed, all right. But the cover charge was too high. Sure, I know a lot of it seems pretty dopey. But you see, they don't always have the time to come around and give guys like you and I all the ins and outs. But remember, the same sort of stuff is happening right over there. You're still talking, Corn. And I still say them brass hats don't know the alphabet. 
Sure. Why in the hell are they keeping us here? We haven't seen a sign of a plane. Or a German. Not even a ghost of one. Now, I don't know, but there must have been a reason for them picking out this spot. Take a look at that dark spot down there. That shadow. Funny little shadow because it isn't standing still. And it don't look like no ghost to me. There's another one just to the left of the first one. A little closer to us. Looks like he's planning us a little visit. What do you say we give him a personal invitation? I'll send number one a calling card. Well, snafu. What do you mean, snafu? I got mine. And You're crazy. That's a dead pigeon out there. You heard me, snafu. Situation normal. All fixed up. Mm -hmm.